If you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. Our guest today is Paul Cairns. Paul started off as a dressage, show jumping and eventing rider, then went on to train with Heather Moffat and Philippe Carl. So now he teaches classical dressage and show jumping and has a strong focus on effective execution as well as elegance in execution to maximise the results. How are you today, Paul? I'm very good, thank you, Glenis. Thank good. you for letting me speak to you today. Oh, no worries. Great to talk to you, and I'm sure you've got lots of information for our listeners. I hope so. <laughs> Paul, we normally start off with a favourite quote. What have you got for us? I guess my favourite quote would be, what is complicated is unimportant, and what is important is never complicated. So that's actually a quote from PK's Philippe Carl's book, and I can give you an example of, of that. Please, yeah. So Philippe, gives the lectures and I was present at one of these lectures one day and he asked the question, pretty simple question, there are two types of lateral work, what are they? And so a discussion chewed over about five minutes of lots of, you know, lots of suggestions were suggested and lots of words like half pass and shoulder in and rombert and inside leg and outside legs and reins and all sorts of things. So after about five minutes, Philippe said, no, the two types of lateral work are the exercise which goes towards the bend of the horse and one that goes away from the bend of the horse. And then I heard someone say, well, that's obvious. And Philippe's comment was, well, if it was obvious, why didn't someone tell me that? Mm, mm, mm. Good. Do you use that now in explaining things to your students? I do. Mm. I do try and use a similar approach because I'm from a non-horsey background. So if you can make things simple, not simplistic, but very simple to understand, yes. your education goes in leaps and bounds. Yep, yep. All right. Now, you say you're from a non-horsey background, but, you know, what are your first memories with horses? Well, I mean, your, your first contact, your first, yeah. My first contact, I guess. I left school and I, uh, I attended ag college. So uh, I understand what you mean with ag college, but a lot of people won't, and you won't have to say agricultural college, which we'll call ag college, yep. <laughs> sure, agricultural college, yes, yep. which consists yep. of various things like driving large tractors, and I can't believe they let me, you know, literally plough fields and blow stumps out of the ground and forestry. And part of it was a sheep and cattle farm, which included mustering on horseback. Mm-hmm. So we did this in groups, so we were mustering a large mob of sheep one day and it was raining and it was windy so I managed to uh, extract my PVC yellow raincoat from behind me and managed to get it up over my head and poof it went up like an umbrella and my horse went from go to woe very quickly Mm -hmm. and there were sheep everywhere and I didn't let the raincoat go so I was going like the clappers. (laughs) So luckily there was a fence in front of me and the horse stopped just before I let the raincoat go. Mm -hmm. So that was a very good lesson in the horse's flight response. Yes, yes. I was going to say, if you I saw a foal one time and he had something in his mouth and he was scared of it. You know, he's running, trying to run away with it. And he's running and the faster he was running, the faster this thing was, you know, was following him. Correct. And it wasn't until his mother whinnied out to him that he whinnied back, opened his mouth, let go of it, and dropped it, and all of a sudden everything was fine. He ran back to his mum, told her of the big adventure, and um, things were cool. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I wasn't as smart as that foal. <laughs> well, I think it was the mother calling out to the foal, the mare calling out <laughs> to right. the foal. Yeah, yeah. So, Paul, it's a long way from you riding and taking off your big yellow raincoat or going to put it on and, you know, having the horse have a very strong flight response. What got you started in classical dressage what got you started really in horses because at that stage you weren't really interested in horses you're probably at ag college just to drive those big tractors sure it's interesting how a change of face kind of happens because Alison and my wife my wife Alison and I we bought a horse together a little 14-3 chestnut Mm -hmm. pony with a lot of experience and a lot of attitude and she did teach me a lot of things it was great because it was experience leading the blind so that was fantastic so (laughs) <laughs> At that stage, we did a lot of show jumping. A lot of we did quite a bit of jumping. So really, my only value add was to count the numbers and make sure they were in the correct order. Mm-hmm. So from there, 
you know, that was pretty much the start. And from there, I bought my own horse. And I was going okay, and I was doing a bit of a venting, and I would sort of come sort of halfway, and I wanted to improve. So I took on a coach, and he he was okay. It was, wasn't too bad. We made slight progress, a bit of progress, but that was fine. And so we got to the stage where apparently I, I was told the problem was my horse. And I was a bit taken back with that. So I was a bit surprised. And funny thing was that he even had a horse that was very suitable for me and was for sale at that present time. So I thought, mm, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to really pursue this. So I put my horse on the market. He was in horse deals. And just so happened at the same time, Alison was walking through a bookshop and bought Heather Moffat's book for me. Mm-hmm. So I read it from cover to cover. And I thought to myself, this is just simple facts, and why hasn't anybody told me this before? <laughs> so before you know it, I was on an airplane to England to train with Heather, mm-hmm. and it was, again, it, it wasn't simplistic, but it was broken down into simple facts, and this is what you need to do, and yeah. it just made all the difference to my riding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. In fact, so much difference to my riding. After about six weeks, I went to a one-day event, and the same coach that I had asked me if I had a new horse. <laughs> Okay, okay. So how long did you go over and spend with Heather? I think initially it was probably for about three weeks. Yep. I don't know if you know, Heather's got a simulator, so we worked on the simulator. I was really, really happy with my progress so much so that I actually imported a simulator into Australia. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's there's only one or two within Australia, and so I was really lucky and I got my level two with Heather Moffat and licensed equitation. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Now, if someone... You know, and thinking about you sort of coming up, and you would have possibly seen people at Ag College that went on and worked with horses. For someone that wants to have a career with horses, what sort of core skills or character traits would you tell them that they need? That's actually interesting because I think any career, any mm-hmm. career needs dedication. I mean, that's pretty obvious and hard work. Like, that's not necessarily just in the horse industry, but I would encourage everybody to ask questions why and why are you doing this and how are you doing this? And keep asking the questions until you get the right answer. Mm-hmm. If you're inquisitive, you will find the answer. Yep, yep. And sometimes when you ask those how questions and why questions, you might realise that there's a better way. Correct. There mm-hmm. might be a better way. And it's actually not a bad thing for the person being asked the question as well because then they can actually sit and think, hmm, this is why I'm doing it. Why am I actually doing it this way? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gets you to explore. Correct. What do you think is the best thing about working in the horse industry? What's the best thing? That's a really good question. I do think it's um, education. If you keep educating yourself, you never, never run out of things to learn. You'll Mm -hmm. never learn everything. Education is definitely the key. And you can improve every day, a little bit by little bit. You're not going to have massive improvement overnight, but you will keep improving. And that's why you have to be do it every day and be consistent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of growth, isn't there? You know, like people. There's a lot of growth. Yeah, and there's you know a bit of a fallacy. People that don't have horses, and you say, "I'm just going for a lesson." What, what do you mean? I thought you could already ride. When people come to me yep. for a lesson, yep, and they go, "Okay, what do you want to achieve?" Mm-hmm. And they go, "X, Y, Z. That's fantastic. Okay, excellent. How often do you ride a week? Oh, on the weekends, once or twice. Mm-hmm. Okay." So your goal is going to be a very it's going to be a long way in the distance. Mm. If you want to get good, you've got to do it every day. Yep. Well, you know, most days. Yep, yep. Well that makes sense. You know, the more often you do practice it and the more consistent you yep. are, the better you're going to get. Yep. All right. Now we talked about earlier on when I introduced you, I said about, you know, Heather Moffat and Philippe Carl. You talked about Heather. Mm-hmm. How's mm-hmm. Philippe helped you in your career? And is there anyone else that you wanted to talk about? Sure. Look, I think Philippe has helped my education mm-hmm. greatly. He's very logical. He's a very good educator, and he knows how to gymnasticise a horse without bits and pieces, without gadgets, and it's all very logical. And if you read his book, you can think, hmm, I always think, why don't other people know this? Mm, mm, mm. I think that that's good. Sometimes you do say that, why don't other people know? But then you've got to think back to a time that you didn't know, you know, and say, right, well, but sometimes they don't know because they've just never been exposed to a different type of thinking. 
Correct. Mm, mm. So Philippe Carl, his emphasis is on gymnasticising a horse yep. and Heather's emphasis is on uh, the rider's position. So sure. it's a really good blend of the two. Good combination, yeah. What about horses? Is there a um, horse that's really helped you with your career? You've mentioned a couple, I think Prinny and you. Yep. Any others? I would definitely say Prinny would have to be my inspiration because it was just so easy. Like it was, she, like say, she was a point and shoot. Mm. I really didn't have to do much. So mm-hmm. it was difficult for me at that stage. And that was my, when I was re- in my, the start of my career. So you know, things became better much easier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you think your proudest moment's been? Uh, that's, that's interesting. I mean, I hope this doesn't sound cliche or twee, but when I teach pupils mm-hmm. and I get the same response, Mm. They say, this is so simple. Why hasn't anybody told me this before? And I get a real kick out of that because it just shows that A, I'm being effective and B, they know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So thinking about where you are now in the horse industry and you're a coach yes. and you're teaching and everything else, what do you think should be your biggest challenge on your way to being where you are now? And also talk about how you've overcome it as well. I guess it was really when I, um, it was out of pure frustration. I stopped riding. I mm-hmm. think I, I mentioned I had an event and I was going to a well-renowned coach and I was going okay, but I wasn't going as quickly as I would like. Mm-hmm. And then I did, you know, just by pure chance, by education and reading, I got myself out of that hole and thinking, well, this is great. But luckily I did read Heather's book and, you know, from there, Heather introduced me to Philippe Carl's videos. I saw that. Again, this is just logical. This is the way I personally would like to train a horse because I think it's correct. And then, as I say, that's history. Yeah, yeah. So I suppose your message there is to say to people, you know, if you are in that position where you're frustrated and you just don't know the answers, you've got to keep exploring. You know, you explored and found the book. You have to keep exploring. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Correct. What do you think? I'm, I'm thinking now of you as a coach. What's a common fault that you see with riders or trainers or handlers? And um, talk about how to fix it as well. Sure. Okay. Well, I think one of the most common problems is people treat the effect rather than the cause of the problem. So, so to give you an example, you know, my wife, Alison, she was going through a, a magazine and found an ad for a band and she said guess what this is for and I had no idea so it was a band that goes around your horse's stomach just behind the girth to prevent you marking your horse with spurs and you think wow like that's that Mm. definitely will work but I have a hundred percent way that you can eliminate that problem and that's take your spurs off and train your horse to go forward from its leg Mm. Mm. Yes, and I think I think there's you know you, you're saying before that you really like Philippe because he Correct. trains without a lot of gadgets, so he's really got that right to the core, hasn't he? He has. Yeah. So Philippe has got. I, you know, I've had discussions with Philippe, and he said, look, he could never open a saddlery because basically he needs a saddle, a snaffle bridle, a double bridle, and that's it. Mm, but mm. that's basically and a caverson, sorry, and a caverson, and pretty much that's it. So. Yep. And he can get a horse to a very high level of education, very mm-hmm. high with using his skills. Yep, yep. Oh, hang on a sec. Let me interrupt to let people know about the horse industry qualifications at onlinehorsecollege.com. If you have a look at the flexible options, there's online theory with practical components that can be completed by video or with a qualified expert in your area. That website, again, is onlinehorsecollege.com. Okay, thanks. So you talked before about the book, about Philippe's book. Do you want to talk a bit more about that? Sure. So the book is called Twisted Truths of Modern Dressage. Which I think is a brilliant name. Don't you think that's a great name? Yeah, yeah. It's a great name for the book. Yeah. So it does, it dispels some myths around modern dressage and the way modern dressage is going. And he has some really great explanations from, again, not simplistic, but simple explanations. And he takes the biomechanics of the horse, how the horse uses his body, and puts that into practical use, how you actually gymnasticise a horse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
No, that's good. And you're certainly not the first person that's recommended that book. I think it's a brilliant title, but, you know, good book as well. Yep, yep, yep. Paul, what are you looking forward to at the moment? What am I looking forward to in the future? Well, mm. apparently my wife has told me that I'm working for AC, so I'm, going, <laughs> I'm looking forward to not the same, but I'm looking forward to training with horses Again, educating myself and just getting better every day. And again, mm-hmm. I know that sounds cliche, but it takes a long time to get very good. Yeah, yeah. And it's nice to be in the position where you go, right, I'm really enjoying the moment here. I'm just enjoying Correct. what I'm doing now. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. And again, it's a bit like you asked me what a young person coming into the horse industry, and again, this is really obvious what they should look for. If you don't like working with horses, probably not the right industry for you. Mm. So you have to like horses a lot. Yes, yes. So if you don't like horses, it's the wrong industry. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Now, just if you can summarise your philosophy in a few sentences, that would be brilliant. Sure. Well, I can summarise it more than a few sentences. (laughs) But in the Philippe Carl Leisure Tay system, uh, there's a training scale and it's a circular training scale. And... In the middle of that training scale is respect for the horse. So I always say, I take that, there's a couple of different ways I take that. I always say to people, look, why don't you take the, just use the fairness test. And my fairness test is, if you've got someone that's non-horsey and knows nothing about horses, you explain to them what you're trying to do and what you achieve and how you go about it. And they may say, okay, that's fair enough. Or maybe, I don't know about that. Or if you haven't got any non-horsey friends, so you take that same situation and there's a great illustration in Twisted Truth of Modern Dressage that Philippe uses of someone taking a child that wants to be a gymnast and drops them off there to be, you know, trained by a qualified coach. Mm-hmm. They come back and to their horror, that child is tied to the a chair, legs bound, hands bound to the legs in front and the mouth is gagged. Mm-hmm. So of the first obvious question is, why are you doing that? Well, and the answer that you're given is, well, the ropes are, are side reins and they're stretching your horse's back. And so, oh, okay, so what about the gag in its mouth? Well, the gag in its mouth was to stop the, any protest that the child may have. Mm. So, mm. again, I think any reasonable person would think that's unfair for a child. So it's unfair for a child. I think it's unfair for a horse. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, then. No, I think that's good, Paul. I think you've certainly given us a lot of information, a lot to think about. And, um, you know, I think the book Twisted Truth and Modern Dressage sort of backs up what you've said as well. Paul, how can people contact you? I have a website called Mm enlightenedequitation.com.au and I could be contacted on that. Great. Wonderful. All right, Paul, good to talk to you and hopefully we'll catch up again sometime with you soon. Great. Thanks for talking. Okay. Bye. Bye. Oh, wait, before you go, if you're an equestrian coach or a horse riding instructor, or even if you aspire to be one, have a look at the free video series for horse riding instructors on the Horse Chats website. Go there now. Have a look. Horsechats.com. Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below. 